Right, okay, so next up, um, we have Leon Silva. Hello. Is Leon Silva here? Hey, Leon. Um, and he is going to read um, something, uh, a tribute to my father um, from Mero Zen. Mero Zen can't be here today, but Mero Zen is uh, a very senior Israeli diplomat, semi retired diplomat, also a jurist of international law. He helped to. Um, negotiate the Camp David Accords between Egypt and Israel. And um, he went with my father on, um, well, you'll hear about it. And, um, he can't be here because his wife is ill. He can't be here because his wife is ill. Mm. And it's a great pleasure for me to have Leon here. Uh, and Leon, you run the Nelson Street Synagogue, is that right? Yeah, yeah. okay. It's a really big pleasure. Can we just... Yeah. yeah. Can you all hear me? <laughs> um, it's a great privilege to be here. Thank you, Mary, for asking me. I didn't know Emmanuel as well as most of you, but it was such an honour to welcome him into the East London Central Synagogue, better known as Nelson Street. <coughs> um, he was guest of honour at an event for the um, Jewish East End Celebration Society. Anyway, th this is... Um, the message. It's from the former Israeli ambassador, Meir Rosen. I'm sorry to be with you this evening. I met Emmanuel for the first time in 1957, more than half a century ago. We started working for the freedom of Soviet Jewry on the same day. We were all in all three people at that time that started the struggle for Soviet Jewry. At the beginning of the 60s of the last century, there were many fellow travelers, including Jews, that considered any criticism of the Soviet Union as fighting against detente and preventing the end of the Cold War. Emmanuel was the first one to publish a newsletter on events in the Soviet Union concerning Jews. It was called Jews in Eastern Europe. His office was at number 55 New Cavendish Street. And at that time, many Jewish organizations refused to join the struggle for Soviet Jewry. Due to his outstanding talent, his warmth as a human being, and his devotion to the Jewish people, he managed to convince many British influential people to join in this endeavor. The International Conference, organized in London in November 1961, chaired by Lord Barnett Janner, with the participation of Lord Van Sittart and Muriel Spark, was one of the important events in our efforts for Soviet Jewry. Although we did not see each other often, we kept in touch throughout the years. During his life, he fought many wars. He did it with a lot of skill, charm, and above all courage, and he won. Many times, walking in the streets of Jerusalem and hearing Russian spoken by Jews that immigrated from the Soviet Union, I think to myself, do they know that they owe their freedom to an unsung hero of our generation, Emmanuel Litvinov? Streets will not be named after him, neither monuments. But in the history of the Jewish people, he will be remembered. He does not need monuments. His monuments are the million Jews that gained their freedom due to the mobilization of world public opinion by a small group of people of which Emmanuel was an important member. I shall miss him badly. To Mary and Aaron, Sarah and Julian, I want to say that you should be proud of having been his family. I shall miss him, his smile, and above all, his kindness. He was my friend for more than half a century. Part of me died with him. Ambassador Meir Rosen, 30th of April, 2012.